Hey, you. Yeah, you. Where you been? Oh, you're having a baby. No excuse. We have missed your uploads and you cannot do this again. Is it a boy or a girl? A girl. Do you know that your body's gonna go through some changes during this pregnancy? I'm not just talking about belly bulge and stretch marks. I'm talking about things that will never be the same again. <laughs> hey guys, this is Naturally Greer and I am coming to you with scary changes during pregnancy. Um, yeah, there are a lot of things that change for you while you're pregnant. Um, some things go back to the way they were before and some things don't so readily so these are some of the things that don't so readily go back or may take a while and so some adjustment may be needed on your part in order to adapt to some of those things that may change this is my last week of pregnancy and so I thought I had a good synopsis of all the changes that my body has gone through because of it being my last week um, and also because of it being my second pregnancy. Okay so, guys so let's get right into it and talk about the least favorite topic of all sex. As a nurse practitioner and a woman that is pregnant sex is something that will be sparse after pregnancy. And that's just because you have to allow your body to heal. Um, it takes about six to eight weeks for some women to heal after a pregnancy. But you will also notice some changes with your body during that time. Estrogen levels are like plummeting and then equalizing again or coming to norm again. And so therefore your want for romantic whatever... <laughs> It's going to be very limited. So don't just think that, you know, you're going to be up and running. Some women are, some women aren't. Um, it's different for everybody. But, you know, your body's going through a lot of adjustment. You have this physical baby now that you have to take care of, this new responsibility. Your mind is somewhere else. Romantic windows are sparse. Um, just because your priorities are somewhere else and then like I said the hormone factor with it so a uh, really a lot your time for your body to come back to a norm level and then you know seek help or attention to this issue if things have passed that period of time and you're still not in the mood or having those urges I want to be intimate with your mate or spouse so literally after you get cleared by your physician get back on the saddle because having that urge or want to have sex is like a muscle you have to exercise it so you know exercise it <laughs> the next topic will be belly bulge um a lot of women see like celebrities like Beyonce and JLo and all of them and Mariah Carey and they just seem like they just bounce right back but that is not the factor for a lot of women, even those, they stay out of the limelight for a period of time, if you notice. Um, once again, it takes about six to eight weeks for the uterus to actually contract or go back down to the pre-pregnancy size. So during that time frame, you will have a little pouch or a pudge. So a lot that time for your body to get back into shape. And then after, like I said, you're cleared by your physician or doctor, you can start picking it up with some exercises. During that six to eight week time though, you can be walking and doing things that are not too strenuous on the body. But once you get that clearance, you can start lifting weights again, light weights. And you can start doing things in the gym, like aerobics and things like that, in order to get your body back to where it was. Before. One of the changes that I did not want to go through, that I have gone through with both of my pregnancies, is the shoe surprise. Yes, moving up in shoe sizes after you've reached a certain age is not fun because you have a nice collection built and so to not be able to fit those shoes or for them not to be comfortable anymore it's really aggravating so with bales I went from a six and a half to a seven and now I'm in between a seven and a seven and a half I'm trying to wait to after everything's over 
to like really you know buy shoes again and things like that but I feel as though this change will probably not go back to norm which is the case for a lot of women you have this hormone called relaxin and relaxin sets in to allow your pelvis um, to relax basically um, it relaxes the vital components that help birthing easier but it's not just targeted to those areas it goes to your feet too so when it does that it kind of relaxes that arch in your foot so your foot becomes flatter and therefore your foot pushes out which makes it longer and it's an irreversible change that your body goes through so once you've worked up to that next size <gasps> I know it's very frightening you will not be able to go back so I'm trying to accept and embrace seven and a half being my new size shoe because that seems where I'm gonna be stuck uh, for the rest of my life now um, like I said this is the last time please don't mark my words <laughs> all right ladies another one for you kind of even with the sex talk um, is cup size how can I be nice about this? Your boobies will never be the same. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you breastfeed or not in most situations. Um, actually, if you breastfeed, sometimes it will rebound a little bit better. But some of the sag, some of the decrease fullness will be lost forever. <laughs> regardless if you breastfeed or not. Um, some things that make it worse for women is if they had a heavier chest before pregnancy, if their BMI or body mass index was greater before pregnancy as well, older age women who become pregnant, as well as smokers who become pregnant. All of those things make putting your cup size back to where it was a little bit more difficult. Not to say that some women don't rebound and gain that elasticity back, but... A little sag and a little decrease in actual fullness is to be expected after you have a kid. It's just the way it is. And the ones we never want to hear about is hair loss. Hair loss is like the worst after you have a baby. Some of it is just your body or your hormones equalizing again. And then some of it is just because frustration, lack of concern, lack of willpower, lack of want to do hair after you have the baby so make sure you're doing things to maintain that hydration and moisture in your hair after you have the baby make sure you're still taking your prenatal vitamins drinking plenty of water and trying to detangle and things like that on a regular schedule basis um, to just prevent breakage and unnecessary hair loss you're going to have hair loss just because, like we talked about earlier, with the estrogen levels. Once your estrogen levels drop, your hair will drop too, and you will lose hair. And that's just part of it. That's just your body getting back to norm. Um, it, nail changes. Okay, so, so if you can look at my middle finger here, I developed like this brown streak through my finger during pregnancy. And what I was told is that... It was because of an iron deficiency. It happens in the African American community more than in the Caucasian community. You'll notice the brown pigmentation in the nails uh, during pregnancy. So make sure you're taking in adequate amounts of iron during this time of pregnancy. Make sure you get blood checks during that time to make sure that you're absorbing the iron correctly because that is a change that will be with you for the rest of your life. One other one that I have suffered from is vision changes. Oh, no. OMG. So, I have become nearsighted during both of my pregnancies, and it has caused a lasting effect that I have to actually use corrective glasses at times that I, of course, do not have at this time. <laughs> I hate wearing glasses because I forget to wear them. And it's not because I don't think they're cute. I love glasses. I've always wanted glasses. When I was a little kid, I wanted glasses because my sister wore glasses. But so one of the main issues with vision changes is because of water retention during pregnancy. 
It causes thickness and the curvature of your cornea sometimes, which causes the nearsightedness to develop. People who already wear glasses or contacts, things like that, may notice it even more in their prescriptions um, during pregnancy as well. They may not notice uh, it being comfortable because of the curvature or the thickness um, that develops behind the cornea. So stop wearing the contacts, just put the glasses on. There's no surgical changes that need to be made until after the pregnancy if these changes stay around and therefore they'll do the corrections then if they need to as far as a prescription goes or surgery in some situations. The main people that have to worry about the vision changes is diabetics. So people that are diabetic before they become pregnant. They already have intraocular pressure, which is pressure behind the eye that's already there from the diabetes. And so therefore they have to worry about blood vessels popping or breaking. So it's definitely something that they need to keep up with. Um, consult their ophthalmologist on a regular basis while the pregnancy is going on and make sure that they're aware of any visual changes that they're having like little spots or things in their eyes or just feeling like their eyesight has changed in any way. Um, another thing that I had no idea about was oral health. Um, I've heard like rumors or whatever like if you don't take your prenatal vitamins things like that that your mouth will be jacked up <laughs> like after you have the baby and all this stuff. That's really not true. Um, if, if a baby is going to need calcium in any way, it's not really going to come from the mom's teeth. It's really going to come from their calcium stores in their bones. So you'll notice that moms will have more brittle bones after um, a pregnancy if they did not supplement like they should have. Um, but your teeth should not be jacked up after you have a baby, okay? <laughs> Um, you could have things like a form of gingivitis um, or gum disease more readily if you don't care for your teeth properly. Women who are pregnant actually produce more plaque buildup in their mouth. So it's very important that you like brush and floss and like do extra things in order to take care of your teeth on a daily basis. I've increased brushing my teeth as well as I've added on a water pick um, and more flossing because I'm horrible with flossing so I've actually tried to do it more during the week and do uh, my water pick too um, during the week which has helped me hopefully we'll see in another month when I go to my dentist um, but I haven't had any pain or any problems in my mouth so I'm hopefully hoping so I'm hoping it has helped with my overall health of my teeth as well there are a bunch of other things that change during pregnancy and hopefully they go back to normal. Mainly they are involving the skin. Um, things like pup and things like that where you develop like papular rashes and things like that on your body. You definitely need to follow up with your primary and your OBGYN about. Um, any mental changes. Some women who already have forms of depression or anxiety, those things may increase or get worse during your pregnancy and they also need to be followed up with your psychiatrist, primary care, and also your OBGYN needs to be made aware of these things, especially if you're on medications that you cannot get off of during this time frame. I hope this helps somebody. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, or if you yourself went through any changes during your pregnancy, please post them below. So I will be back sooner than later. Check me. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment below. And I'll see y'all later with another addition to our family, Miss Brooklyn Harper, that will be making her entrance November 2nd. And I hope you enjoyed your scary facts about pregnancy. Check you on the next video.